All right, we're back on this 2007 Lexus that we put 460 grams, all 134 refrigerant in. Just had some work done on it, and I just had to remove, because they had to remove the compressor to change the idler pulley, because the bracket for the idler pulley, the compressor sat on top of that, so the bolts and the compressor had to be removed. So all I did was recover the refrigerant, they changed the idler pulley, and I'm just back out here and I recharged it. And I told you this is the second video. First video was recharging it. Now I told you I was gonna use no gauges. So now we're just using all Bluetooth wireless sensor. So I have the field piece on the low side section right here, wireless sensor right there. On the high side, I got the wireless sensor Bluetooth hooked up there. Here's our temperature sensor on the liquid line, temperature sensor on the suction line. We have our ambient temperature right there. And then we got our dash temperature coming from, and we've got a reflection there, coming from the gauge right there, out the dash. So on this vehicle, the pressure has been staying steady. There's 32 PSI, we're almost like five minutes in. And then here we are nine minutes in, we're still at 32 PSI, it's a really steady, low side this is a variable displacement compressor the high side has been staying right around 145 almost hitting 150 just under it so 140 to almost 150 149 and temperature wise we have been hitting we're setting steady at 42 degrees out the dash it's 67 degrees ambient temperature measured right here Let's simulate a failed fan. This has two electric fans on it. So you have one fan here, one fan here. And let me uh, disconnect one. See if I can get my hands down there. Let's see if I can not drop my phone into the fan section there. Come on. Fingers and I could get out. I don't know if I could do the other one. All right, that was a total failure. Let me see if I could just pull. Okay. It looks like my hands don't want to take anything off today. Ah, there we go. There we go. Now let's find, oh, they don't have nothing. Oh yeah, it's kind of marked. Fan two, right there. Fan three, right there. Let me see, nope, oh, not gonna get that out either. Wow, all my failures to be prepared to make videos, because I always do them last minute and I don't think about them. I just say, yeah, I'm going to do this now. Not be prepared. Trust the old scrap on. Strap on. Fan two. Let's take off fan two. Remember, we got the pressure right there. Oh, we got Fahrenheit right there. Let's put the pressure on. And it doesn't want to do my hand. These gloves. I have two sets of gloves on. I have rubber gloves on here too. Put that down. There we go. Now we could go over the pressure. Let's pull our fan two out. Let's look at our pressure. See our pressure right there? Our high side pressure is at 140 psi. I'm gonna pull fan two out. There we go. Now we're gonna simulate a dead fan. You can see this fan has just come to a dead halt. We still have one fan. Oh, that killed fan two, too. Okay, so now we get to see uh, the pressure go up. There we go, 170. There we can see our low side going up with it. 190. 
what's happening with our uh, temperature out of that. We went up to 46 degrees. Oh, there goes that first fan. Oh, over, over pressure. Okay. So this relay will control and kill that fan. But the pressure sensor in the system noticed the high side pressure went up to, let's see, where, where did it go? It noticed at 100 and... 200. At 250 PSI, the high side pressure switch took over and it threw out, a, it went through another relay. It went through one of these other relays and it triggered a overpressure situation and it just turned on, bypassed and it turned on just this one pan because I have this out here. So this one is not working. This one just went into high speed because it went into overpressure. And so it's in an emergency mode to save the system, to keep it on. If this relay would have failed or the wire coming out would have came disconnected or got cut through, this would have failed, but the high pressure switch just took over through, through another signal to put on the boost high, high pressure, high speed. So now it's in the high speed and it's holding and maintaining at around 180 with two fans it was at 140. So two fans can do 140 PSI and maintain it. Now remember, it's low ambient temperature. If it was 90 degrees or 100 degrees, that one fan would not be enough even at a high speed at idle. When you're going down the road 60 miles an hour, you don't need the fans. Okay, so let's connect that back up. There we go. Now the second fan, oh, now they just shut off because the pressure went down. Now the second, this fan is on low speed. This fan is on low speed. So now both fans are on low speed. And with both fans on, you don't hear them no more howling, right? So with both fans, the pressure is dropping, 169. It's going down a little bit. So it'll probably get back down here to 140 PSI. Now let's see how can we, which one will disconnect? What I'm trying to do, if I can disable that one fan so the high speed doesn't take over and show you that. So we have AC compressor right here. We have fan number one right there. Can I do this? Ah, there we go. So let's see, who's shut off? We got that one still running. That one's still running. It did not disable that second fan. So fan one, fan two, fan three. What does fan three do? This is without looking at a wiring ceramic. Or, there we go, fan three. So fan three just killed this fan. And it just killed this fan. So let's look at the high side pressure again. And here we're going, we're going back up. 191. So let's see when we hit 250, does it override, does it still have a uh, relay that's gonna override these? I don't think so, because now I have, well I still have that one in. Let's see, where are we at? 236. 260, no it did not. We have no fan there. We have no fan there. We're still going up. 280, 289, well, almost 300 PSI. So let's put back one relay. Can I get one fan to operate? High speed. Okay, now this fan, remember before, this fan was on high speed. So by having this relay out, the high pressure sensor sent a signal to turn this on to second speed, high speed. So now this speed is on high speed. And you can see it coming down right here. 
we came down from 330 some psi almost 300 where did we get up to so we got up to about 350 psi and we now have the other fan in high speed and the second fan is just sitting here dead so let's hook them back up and there we go and they're both on high speed right now because the pressure is so high 221 and in a minute once the pressure gets down both fans will drop and we won't hear them so much but look at that low pressure that low pressure it's staying at 25 psi the low pressure is staying down there you don't see the high pressure coming up on this particular year make model vehicle some other vehicles the high pressure would have went up look at this when we were up here at 300 and almost 50 psi our low side was only at 34 psi very little change there the fans just went down they're now on low speed you can't hear them and that happened about right about there Somewhere around 170 PSI is where um, low fan speed comes in. Now, if you didn't have access to Lexus website or factory or Toyota training or anything, you didn't have Mitchell, you didn't have tilt engine, you got to teach yourself. You're on an island somewhere. You're in a third world country or somewhere where you just don't have, you have to teach yourself how a circuit breaks. Now, a little bit of reading helps. If you have some access, that would help. But if you slowly start teaching yourself on different vehicles, as long as they're old style, that you don't back probe transducers that have five volts and you put 12 volts into five volts because then you blow an ECM. But if you teach yourself how every vehicle that you see in your shop works, you will gain a, a, a dictionary in your own head you'll have a cyclopedia of cars and how they operate differently like the other day the video I released I think last week on a Subaru where I kind of noticed that the high side pressure was too cold for a it was like 40 some degrees 50 some degrees and I go that's not right and when I looked over I noticed one of the fans were not operating and I was pretty sure in the back of my head that particular vehicle should have two fans and a week later, the technician told me when I came back for another vehicle, he goes, yeah, I found the problem that you told me we had with the fan. There was a connector that you could not see or get to from up in the engine compartment that he found disconnected. Uh, and they noticed it was in their shop, but somebody else put on new fan blades on it and was working on it and they forgot to connect one of those connectors. So that customer was out driving around with only one fan. If you would have lost the second fan, on that Subaru, we all know when you overheat a Subaru, usually your um, head gaskets go. So that was, uh, if not for finding that, that customer would have got screwed later on on a hot summer day when it overheated. All right, guys, so that's good enough for now. We'll get out of here and uh, see you on the next one.